Hey guys, we're gonna do Florida practice week nine. Now some kids um, didn't get this section, so that's why I'm making the recording. All right, so let's see. Um, if y equals to three x, what is the length of AC? So what is the length of AC? Well, we have an isosceles triangle. That means two sides are the same, two angles are the same, and then one is different. Okay, so I can't set this equal to anything because it's different. But what I could do is set these equal to each other because they are supposed to be the same because of that mark, right? So we can figure out what x is. It looks like x is 5, okay? So I can plug x back in here. So y equals 3 times 5, which is 15. Nice. So now we know what y is. They said solve for AC. AC is 3y plus 2. So 3 times, and y is 15, plus 2. So that would be 45 plus another 2, 47. There's our answer. Okay. Which of the following statements is not true? So that means some are true, and one of them is false. A triangle with three con three congruent sides would be three congruent angles, yes. An isosceles triangle theorem can be applied to equal angle, equilateral triangles. Yeah, I could imply that even though if they have all the sides, I can imply that two equal sides make two equal angles. The measure of each angle of an equal, no, the measure of each angle is 60, right? 60, 60, and 60, add them all up, you get 180. So here's our answer. This one is the one that is not true, right? All right. Two, given a composition of transformation. So what is a composition? It's a combo, meaning it's a combination of more than one. So it would map A, B. So this is our original shape, right? So we started here and we ended up here. And I have to get there in two steps, or two or more. State the relationship between A and B. Well, if a given transformation does get there, we know that they are congruent. So what is the relationship? We know that A, B, C is congruent to D, E, F. Because we know by the definition of composition, compositions of rigid motion create congruent shapes. Now, um, it doesn't say I have to write out what, um, how to get, how to map one on top of the other, but I could just for practice because another unit. So it looks like I could flip it over if I reflect over the um, x-axis. Right? Then this, in instead of two above, it would be two below. Instead of three above, it would be three below. So here's my new coordinate for A, B, and C. Right? Then it looks like if I flipped over this line... that it would land upon itself. I also think I could have done this in reverse. And I also think that possibly rotating it 180 degrees counterclockwise or rotating 180 degrees uh, counterclockwise, either one would get me there too. Kind of cool how that works. Okay. One, marks, mark the cells in the table to indicate which of them one are congruent. Okay, so I'm just gonna highlight. This guy is two wide, right? And then I went up two over one, so it kinda has sides two one. And this one I went up two over one, so it has sides two one. Uh, okay, this one has the same thing. It has one side that's two units long, and it has a side that is up two over one. It's the hypotenuse of a triangle that's up two over one. 
Okay, so those are definitely the same. The other ones are very obviously not. So A, B, C, and D, E, F are congruent. Now D, E, F. No, no, no. What about G, H, I? G, H, I looks like it's congruent to J, K, L. And... MNO doesn't look congruent to anybody. So GHI is congruent to JKL. Interesting table. Okay. Now, can I verify that? Well, this has a triangle up one over one. This is a triangle up one over one. This is a triangle one, two, three, four. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. This is a triangle up three over one. So this is up three over one. So it does have all the same dimensions. So we're definitely gonna be able to say this one. Nice. All right, what is, what is the measure of angle A? Okay, so if these sides are equal, the isosceles triangle theorem states that the base angles are equal. So we can kind of picture folding this, and if this is 35, it would line up with that one. Now we don't know what angle A is, but it's something that's different, right? Two equal sides, two equal angles but one side and one angle that's different. So if there's three angles, like A, B, and C, we know they add up to 180. Angle A, we don't know, but it looks like B and C are 35 and 35. Right? So if we subtract 70 here, I get 110. And I can check my work with 110 plus 35 plus 35 is 180. What are the lengths of AB? What is the length of AB? Okay, let's find out. Well, this says that these are equal. So A, if this side's 5x minus 2, this side would also be 5x minus 2. But setting those equal to each other are not going to tell me what x is. It's just everything's going to cancel. So what can I do? Um... I could set these two equal to each other, right? Because the two equal sides, two equal angles. So what do we got here? Get 30. So 30 plus 20 is 50. So this one's 50. Six, two times 30 is 60, take away 10 is 50. So then that means this has to be 80. Yeah, 30 plus 50 is 80. All right, so what is X? It's 30, right? So now you can actually solve for this side. If this has to be 30, I have five times 30 minus two. That'd be 148, and there's our answer. Nice work. All right, since it's showing, I'll go ahead and do A. Select all the statements that must be true. So we know these are equal, which means these have to be equal, right? And let's see. We could redraw this diagram and notice we don't necessarily know. This could be 90 degrees or it could be a little bit more than 90 or a little less than 90. We don't know for sure. So we can't assume 180. Or excuse me, we can't assume this is a 90 degree angle unless they tell us otherwise. So what all do we know? We know A and C are equal. Is A, D equal to D, C? A, D, we don't know that for sure. A, B is equal to B, C. Yep, we know that because that mark. B, C is parallel. No, I don't see anything parallel. And I don't see anything perpendicular. I can't assume it. Okay. Seven, given that Y is three. Okay, so Y is three. So two times three plus two, six, and another two is eight. Okay, so this is eight, and these are all equal. This has to be eight, this has to be eight, right? So x plus seven has to be eight. That means x has to be one, right? I can also look at five 
x plus 3 has to be 8. 5x divided by 5. Divided by, yep, x is 1. So what is x? x is 1. Nice. All right, let's use this figure for items 9 and 10. So what two triangles are congruent? So to me, it looks like these two are congruent, right? One's just the upside version of the other, so that's 2 and 4. Now, how can, we, we sh how can we be sure this is 2, right? And I went up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. Now I'm looking for the same thing here. Yep, I got 2, up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. Now you're like, why am I doing that? Well, technically, the length of that side, the length of that side is a hypotenuse. So it would be equal to the square root of 3 squared plus 1 squared. So I'm just kind of using a code that it's the hypotenuse of a triangle, of a right triangle that's 3, 1. It's the hypotenuse of a triangle that's 3, 1. All right. Write a composition of rigid motions to map the one on top of the other. Okay. So... It looks like there's more than one answer to this, but it looks like I could flip it over this x-axis, so then it would be up, up here, right? But then I have to move it over and down. So reflect over x-axis, and then translate. A certain amount to the left, and I think it was one down. So we usually show that like this. A certain amount to the left, and then one down. Let's say a certain amount to the left. So let's count that. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then one down. So six. So that would look like that. All right, so. And I could probably... Um, maybe not do this in reverse, but there'd be another way I could have like scooted it over here and then flipped it. Um, okay, that's it. That is week nine.